D, wait for it. Light bulb. I got the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So, it looks like uh, Kathleen Kennedy might be saved uh, in Star Wars. So, if you look at it, and we're going to go over this, uh, this article by uh, Pirates and Princesses. But I just have to say that uh, Kathleen Kennedy, uh, you know, uh, her contract was up in 2021. And then she wasn't going to be, rumor was that she was going to not be signed by uh, Lucasfilm and she was going to get uh, kicked out of Lucasfilm. And she was going to go to producing and everything so she could, um, you know, save face in Hollywood and everything. Because Star Wars is not good. I mean, yes, the three movies, the, the sequel trilogy, they made money, and that's great for, for Disney and uh, Lucasfilms and everything, but I mean, as far as a fan, um, the sequel trilogy, in my opinion, I liked the first one when it first came out, but now I've realized that it's just a copy of A New Hope, and that's not what somebody like me personally wants. I don't want, if you can't write an original story, then get out of here. I don't, I don't need you in my life. Um, also, uh, then you got The Last Jedi, which there are, and there, uh, again, there are things from each and every movie that I like. There are little, little things that I like, but overall, I, they're just not good and everything. And if you think they are, um, then you're settling for mediocre and you're settling for, uh, rehashed stories and, um, you know, bad writing. So we are going to take a look at this article. We're going to read through it, and let's just talk, chit-chat about, uh, yeah, everything that's going on. So here we go. All right. So it says, Disney Plus may save Kathleen Kennedy's job. Let's hope it doesn't. So it says, we're hearing that a change is afoot over at Lucasfilm, whereas previously we had believed that Kathleen Kennedy would leave her position as head of Lucasfilm when her contract ends. Uh, taking a legacy position within the Walt Disney Company, we know we now believe that might be in question. Ugh, I hope not. That would be the worst. Stupid ads. Anyways, according to sources familiar within the ongoings of Lucasfilm, we know we now believe that Miss Kennedy may be positioning herself to stay at Lucasfilm. We're not sure how this affects John Favreau and how he perceives his future with Star Wars. The change, we believe, is that Miss Kennedy now has a successful series in The Mandalorian and the future of entertainment appears to be a long format series on streaming platforms. And that I do agree with. I think, I don't know, I don't necessarily know if um, movies are done with as far as Star Wars goes, but The Mandalorian, in my opinion, is successful. I really like The Mandalorian, especially the last episode was so good. Um, and I just really think that it, it does have a future, Star Wars, in streaming. I mean, they just uh, talked. To, they just announced like the solo TV show is going forward. Um, but uh, as far as Kathleen Kennedy and John Favreau, Kathleen Kennedy didn't make the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. It's John Favreau's work that made the Mandalorian what it is. So as far as them saying like she, the successful series, the Mandal, she's now has. Uh, that's not hers, in my opinion. So I think that still she can't take credit for it, in my opinion. So let's continue. Big budget feature films may no longer be the king of the cinematic revenue system, and rather series like The Mandalorian and Stranger Things could be the paradigm shift. Combined with the power of a successful series on the Disney Plus, perhaps the most important asset on Disney Plus, I mean, right now, if you could say it is, um, the job opportunities in Hollywood going forward are limited and changing. Whereas Kennedy would have had her choice of positions before the pandemic, that's no longer so certain. This provides her with incentive to keep the current job. We also believe that the series, that she's interested in pushing her ideological views and a new strategy is being formed in which properties like The Mandalorian are protected from such measures while other new series are given license to push the philosophical boundaries. We believe Leslie Headland is a part of that strategy. Hopefully not. I mean, if the rumors are true of what, what's going on with that, then I hope not. But even if Kennedy wishes to stay, <clears throat> sorry, surely she doesn't have the support behind her, you might say. 
And to some degree, you'd be right. Kennedy botched the sequel trilogy to the point there's almost no marketing whatsoever for those characters any longer. I did a video on this. Um, you can check that out up here. Um, but uh, yeah, she she botched the sequel trilogy as far as as far as like uh, toys, the uh, merchandise goes, and all that stuff. It's it's crazy uh, how how bad it is. Anyways. Uh, Kennedy botched the sequel trilogy to the point there's almost no marketing whatsoever for those characters any longer. The original trilogy and prequel trilogy both have beloved characters decades later, but Kennedy has a secret weapon to staying on the president of Lucasfilm. Let me explain. Imagine for a moment that there was a company which was trying to woo a communist government. Gosh, this stupid man communist government that was enslaving millions and millions of people with religious minorities uh, being put into literal concentration camps. Now imagine that said company had billions in assets that could be taken by said communist government at any point. Now let's further the depravity by saying that the company was so controlled by the communist government that the company would film fantasy propaganda for the communist government and would film said fantasy directly next to those concentration camps. Let's add to the ante by saying that that company, that the company even depends publicly the rest of the world. Now a company like that is probably not a company that cares too greatly about human rights, correct? So let's say that the same company is simultaneously trying to keep their stock up during a pandemic and that the main way to they do that is through inflated numbers of subscribers to their new streaming service. Pretty much if those numbers underperform, the company's stock will crater uh, and things get really, really ugly. Okay, now with all that understood, let me ask you a question. Do you think that this company beholden to a communist government filming next to concentration camps and bragging about it, dependent on their streaming service succeeding all costs, do you think it decided to change one of their beloved attractions at great cost out of the goodness of their heart or because they do anything to prevent a boycott slash backlash that would hurt their subscriber numbers? If you're a bit lost, let me explain. During the pandemic, when Disney has less money or financial stability, and they do, I mean, the, the parks are doing all right, and they try to make it sound good and during their investor call, but I have to be honest, they were still down. So, I mean, they weren't as down as uh, they thought they would be, or it was protect, uh, projected that they would be, but they were still down as far as profits goes. Anyways, um, the company suddenly and admittedly fast-tracked announces changes to one of their most beloved attractions in their parks. The IP switch uh, to Splash Mountain occurred at the height of Black Lives Matter protests. Now you might think, now you might think, I think they meant to say think. That's totally coincidence, if I could read. Uh, if that's what you think, that's okay, but others, including myself and me, I'm reading this person's article, but I also agree with it, believe that announcement and the subsequent changes are a direct result of Disney looking to make sure they're not the target of any boycott or negativity towards the company that might result in lower Disney Plus numbers. I don't think a company that films next to concentration camps cares one iota about Briar Rabbit being a 400 million human rights issue. If you've hung in there with the logic until now, you might already know how Kathleen Kennedy can keep her job, even if she's done very poorly. What happens if Kathleen Kennedy doesn't get a, a contract renewal and she also makes it known she's unhappy about that? Well, there might be a backlash from certain ideological camps, right? I think if Disney is willing to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to get rid of something animatronic animals, they fire tens of thousands of employees, you think they're going to go to war with Kathleen Kennedy and risk a potential backlash that could cost them subscribers? Um, honestly, I don't know, but I would. I mean... Uh, how much? How much longer could she have? If uh, it does, uh, you know, I'll hold on. I mean, let me finish this article. Uh, 
So would Kathleen Kennedy be on board with anything that could harm Disney Plus numbers? Should she be let go? Almost certain not officially, but she's also not officially out to take down John, Bob Iger, but unofficially, well, she hired Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant that even Harvey worried has information that would be detrimental to a lot of people in power. If you're not sure how that's all connected, just look up Paz de la Herterka. I don't know what that means. Uh, the key to all of this we're hearing is that Kathleen wants the gig. And if Kathleen wants it, Kathleen has the leverage to get it. Let us know. Okay, yeah, yeah. I will look that up as soon as one of I want that. Okay. So that is the article. Okay. Sorry, I'm just. So that's the article right there. Um, and I just have to say, like, I honestly think that, uh, I honestly think that Kathleen Kennedy is a vile human being, in my opinion. I mean, she said she doesn't care about the male Star Wars fan. She then hired Leslie Headland, um, uh, which she, she is a, uh, you know, Harvey Weinstein's former assistant, I'm sorry, she may have been uh, only for a year, but she was his personal assistant. And I've been an assistant before. Let me just tell you right now, you know everything that's going on. I mean, you know stuff that you didn't think that you would know. Um, so for her to not know what went down, wink, wink, wink. Anyways, she also, uh, you know, John Boyega, you know, she doesn't care about black people. I'll tell you that right now, Kathleen Kennedy. She gives zilch about minorities. Um, she only cares about her white feminist agenda. And I also honestly believe that she doesn't care about storytelling. She doesn't care about anything except for getting along, getting out her, her, this cult like ideology. And, you know, it's, it's horrible because you take a franchise that people like myself love and she's just, you know, crapping all over it. And I, like I said, she doesn't care. She honestly does not care. So um, I do. I don't know if, the, if she's going to be sticking around. If she does stick around, if they if they feel that they need to give her another contract, I say give her one year, one year, and then see ya. Um, because I'm sorry, she's not worth the trouble in my in my opinion, and she's not doing anything with this Mandalorian show. It's all John Favreau and Dave Filoni, who I kind of have a little bit of a problem with, but. Um, yeah, it's just them. It's all their ideas and everything. She has nothing to do with it. She's practically useless now. So, I mean, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, go ahead and tell me what you guys think. Leave all your comments in that section down below. I hope they're good ones. Um, if you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know I won't mind if you do my channel. Please hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. I will see you guys on the next uh, Star Wars video. You guys have a good day. Bye.